welcome to ST Bespoke Academy. My name is Treasure Sabs and today we are going to be cutting and sewing up a pencil skirt. What we are going to need for this project is our fabric and today I'm going to be using this beautiful embroidered silk with these lovely flower patterns on the fabric. We'll need our tape measure, we need a pair of scissors, we're going to need our tellers chalk. We'll need an hip curve if you have it. It's useful to be able to create shape on the hip. And also we're going to need a ruler. So let's get started. To get started, these are the measurements that we're going to need. Our skirt length, that is from waist to the desired length of the skirt. Mine is 27 inches. Hip length from the waist to the hip is 8 inches my waist circumference is 36 inches my hip circumference is 42 inches and my bust span is 8 inches bust span is the distance between both nipples now before we start cutting because i am cutting straight on fabric today i am not using any pattern paper these are the calculations that we need to be mindful of before we start cutting. If circumference, which is 42 inches divided by 4, gives me 10.5 inches, then I'm going to add 1 inch seam allowance on both sides. And because I'm cutting on fold, so it's just going to be 1 inch seam allowance when I cut on fold. The waist circumference which is 36 inches divided by four gives me nine inches. And then because we are adding our dots in the waist, I'm gonna add the dot and the seam allowance, which is gonna give us uh, two inches in addition. So that will be 11 inches. Bust span divided by two will be four. And that is gonna help us uh, determine the distance between our dots that is for the front measurement for the back measurement is the same way we do we divide by four as well so for the hip circumference divided by four gives me 10.5 but because at the back I'm going to be adding zip so I have to add my zip allowance usually I like to use two inches as my zip allowance so two inches as a zip allowance plus my one inch side seam allowance. So it gives me three. So additional three added to 10.5 will give me 13.5 for the hip circumference for the back measurement. For the waist measurement for the back is waist circumference divided by four gives me nine. Again, same thing applies because the zip allowance is there plus the dot allowance as well as the seam, I need an extra four inches. So four inches plus nine gives me 13. But when you are drafting your pattern, especially on a fabric, make sure you had half an inch of ease just to make your skirt a little bit more comfortable. So let's get started. Before we start drafting our pattern on a fabric, there are two things we have to consider. First, it is important to look at the flowers or the prints or the designs on the fabric you're going to be using. In this case, you can see the flowers are facing this direction, this upward direction. So for this skirt, I'm going to make sure the skirt is facing this way because I want the flowers to be facing up like this uh, on the fabric. The other thing we need to consider is the stretch of the fabric. This is the width of the fabric and this is the length of the fabric where the selvage is you want to pull and stretch it to see how stretchy either side is it is very important that you use a side that has the most stretch because it goes around your body use that as the width in this instance this fabric doesn't have any stretch on either side so i'm okay to go so I need to measure the length that I need for my skirt.
before I do that I'm going to measure out just one inch from the top just to be able to give room for our seam allowance uh, later so I measure out one inch from the top and just mark it it'd be nice to have a, a square ruler so that I won't need to mark it like this but yeah we just mark a straight one inch here on the top of the fabric where your waist is going to be and then every measurement will then start from that point that you have marked that is one inch above the length of my skirt is 27 but i'm going to have two inches at the hem so that i'll use the two inches to hem it in so i'm going, just going to measure out 27 inch from the point that i've marked here Twenty seven inch and then I'll mark out my two extra which is twenty nine Twenty nine and then measure that along The width of the fabric Roll that out. And then I'm going to cut that. Now I have the length of my fabric the other things that I'm considering on this fabric is the way the flowers are arranged I want the flower to be at the center front of my skirt now we're going to draft the front part of the skirt first I have cut out what I need to make my front skirt and how will you know how much fabric you need to make your front skirt you want to use the widest part of your measurement in my own case the widest part of my measurement is my hip which is 42 and like I explained earlier my hip circumference which is 42 divided by 4 gives me 10.5 so I'm gonna have one inch seam allowance all right because I'm going to be cutting it on fold one inch seam allowance and also because I like my skirt to be a little bit more comfortable I will also have half an inch for the ease okay so in total you need 10.5 plus one that's 11.5 plus half that is 12 inches on fold okay so on fold you're going to measure at 12 for your width measurement so I am folding it in half and because I am cutting directly on the fabric I don't want to stain my uh, fabric so I'm going to be make, doing my markings on the wrong side of the fabric okay but before we go on, I'm just going to give this place a little press just to be able to make sure that our garment is firm. Now I have ironed out the edge of the center front of the fabric to make my front skirt. So now we'll do our markings. The first measurement you need is your waist to hips measurement, your hip length measurement. And mine is, uh, mine is 8 inches. So I'm going to mark 8 here, we've measured out our, our length which is 27 plus 2 for the M allowance. So I'm going to mark out the 8 here so that I can have a straight line on my hip length. So I'll measure that out. My hip circumference is 10.5. 10.5. I marked 10.5 there. I wanted I wanted half an inch of ease, so I mark my half an inch of ease, 
and then my one inch seam allowance which i'm going to mark as well right so and then on the waist my waist circumference divided by four is nine inches i mark that out then i need one inch for my dot allowance i mark the one inch out i need half an inch also for my ease half an inch and then my seam allowance of one inch so i'm going to connect that to my hip with my ruler some people like to measure their knee circumference because we are making a pencil skirt i want it to taper down below there but i'm not going to measure my knee length what i just need to do is use the measurement of my hip which is 10.5 plus ease which is 11 so i'm just going to mark that 11 here without adding a seam allowance to it okay and then i'll connect that from the hip down to the m line now make sure this place is curved out before you cut it so i'm just going to use my hip curve here to make sure that it is all rounded and not pointing so i'm going to just cut that out Okay, the next thing we are going to do is to create our dot line. My bust span is 8. We divide that by 2 gives us 4. So I'm just going to measure out 4 inches from the center front. 4 inch. The length of my front dot is 5 inches. So I will mark 5 inches there and roll it up to the waist. Remember, we've taken out the one inch of our waist dot here. So we're going to take that in here. All right. So one inch, that will be half inch on both sides. Half an inch on both sides. And then we connect that line from there to there. I don't need to connect the line there. I'll just take it to the sewing machine to make my dot. But just for the purpose of demonstration, I'll just connect the line for you to see. So this is going to be our dart position. What you want to do when you get to the machine is to fold that, making sure these two lines touch each other up to that point, and then you will give it a sew. You will sew it just from there up to that point. I will show you how to do that when we get to the sewing machine. Now we've created our dart line. Now the next thing we're going to do is to give our waistline some shape from the side here you measure at one inch that we have left earlier but at the center front you measure up half an inch just half an inch from the center front and then you connect that point from the side to the center front to create the waist shape So I'm just going to give that a cut. And then I will notch this center front just to identify that is the center. Now we have finished the cutting of our front skirt to make the back skirt. Now I'm just going to lay my front pattern on the back panel. I don't have to do another drafting on the back panel. I'll just lay this on the back on the fabric for the back panel, leaving the two inch allowance for our zip. So let me put that aside for a minute. 
Okay, now it's time to draft our back pattern. Again, considering the flower that is on my fabric, I want, because there's gonna be a zip at the center back. A zip is gonna be here. I want flower to be on both sides of the zip. So I need to consider that when I'm laying out the pattern for my back, I need these flowers to be on both sides of the zip. So that means the zip is gonna be somewhere here. So I'm gonna fold that just there and give it a bit of ironing just to lay it flat. Now I'm aligning the flower to make sure they align together. Okay, so I'm going to take that to the ironing board to iron out. But before I do that, I need to make sure that I've got enough room for my zip allowance as well as enough width for my back measurement. So to do that, I'm just going to lay the front that we've drafted on the back panel. Oh, great, we have more than enough. So I'm just gonna iron that out. So this is our center back all ironed out and laying flat. So what I'm gonna do now is to lay my front panel on the fabric for our back panel to make our back skirt. But before I do that, I need to measure out the allowance that I need for my zip. And I like to use two inches zip allowance because of the flap that is gonna be at the back skirt, all right? So I'm just gonna measure out the two inches now from the top. Now, I'll give this uh, a snip so that we can identify the place where our zip is going to start from. So the next thing I'm going to do is, this is our front panel. The next thing I'm going to do is to lay that on top of the back panel so that I won't necessarily have to draft out the back panel, if you know what I mean. So I'll lay that there, because it's exactly the same measurement that we need for both the front and the back, with the exception of the zip allowance. So I'm just gonna lay that down, and then pin it, pin both fabric together so that they stay in place. Make sure it's all laid down flat. Okay, and then we give it a cut. Then we need to cut this place into half because that is our back panel where the zip is going to be attached. So I'll cut that. Now remember that we created our dart for the front. So I'm going to transfer the same dart to the front but to know where I drafted, so I'm just gonna give this a snip on both sides of the dot, and then lay it back on the, to know where my dart point is for the back. For my dart length at the back, I like to make it four. And the reason for that is we have more bump at the back, our bump is bigger, in the front is kind of flat. So 
my measure my length for the dots at the back i usually give it a four some other people do it a different way but i like to do a four i mark out four and then connect again just like i explained earlier you then take it to the machine and make the dot like that so i'm just going to give it a notch here so that we know where our dot point is going to start from okay we finished our front and the back skirt panel the next thing we're going to do is to cut out our waistband now to cut out my waistband so my waistband is 36 so i want a length of 36 plus two inches one inch of, on both side for the seam allowance and an extra one inch for my buttonhole so i need 38 in length for the width of my waistband i like my waistband to be two inches not more than two inches all right so that means on fold i'm going to be cutting four inches so i need four inches but because we need to have a seam allowance to join it together as well so it has to be five one extra inch so that make it five inch so what i'm going to be cutting is five inch of the width so i measure that out 38 inches and five inches down we just give that a cut and then fold to meet that I'm just highballing it just make sure that it's five inches before you cut out that's five 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 that's perfect and then we cut it out use your hand to guide it so that the fabric doesn't move or you can pin it down just to make sure that you are cutting on the right place Brilliant. So I'm going to fold that in half and give it a good press. So I'll take it to the ironing board and give it a good press. Now it's all pressed and folded in half. To make sure that your waistband is firm, it is advisable that you attach an interlining just to give it some body and make it firm. So I'm just going to attach an interlining i have run out of interlining but i've got these pieces of interlining here and there so what i'm going to do is just cut out strips uh short short strips like that until i get enough to go around my waistband so i'll cut a few more strips like that and just iron it onto the half part of my waistband all right now that brings us to the end of the cutting of our pencil skirt we'll now take it to the machine to sew it all up thanks for watching